Hello, Bay Harbor and friends. I'm so happy that you joined us. My name is Paul Kleins. I am the pastor of Bay Harbor Church, and I'm so honored. We're so honored and thrilled that you joined us. Um, this is a time of worship that we're going to have together. And in just a minute, we'll have some time of singing, and then I want to share a message um, on this Mother's Day, special for, for this Mother's Day. But before we get to that, let me just say a couple of things happening. Um, since we can't be together in person, there's all kinds of great ways that we can still be together. Somebody asked me just the other day, somebody says, well, when is the, when is the church going to start meeting again? And I looked at him and said, well, are you kidding me? The church has never stopped meeting. We don't need a building to be the church, and we certainly don't need a building to meet. There's, we meet in all different kinds of ways. I want to share with you a really exciting new way that we're meeting starting on Monday. We're starting these new daily short Zoom gatherings called Zoom Meetup. And we use this, the Zoom um, um, app on your phone, or you can get it on your computer if you're not using it already for multiple other um, kinds of meetings. It's a great way that we can connect together. And so they're just going to be about 15 or 20 minutes. They're going to be every day starting tomorrow, Monday, at 7 p.m. And you can join us um, for the Zoom meetup. Come on right at 7 because they're not going to last that long, about 15 minutes. And different people will be on there. It'll be different people, I'm guessing, every week. You can come every day or you can come whatever day you're available at 7 for a few minutes. But just go to the app or go to the website and click on the Zoom meetup and you'll see some friends and you can wave at them, you can talk to them and say hi. There'll be just a, a, just a few minutes of conversation and a few minutes of prayer together. And we're starting those tomorrow. Every day at 7 p.m., a Zoom meetup. So come join us. It'll be so great to connect together like that. Also, um, every Wednesday on Facebook, if you're a Facebook person, every Wednesday at 6, we have a Facebook Live that, that, that I host. It's just a fun way to connect together, and it's a little bit silly. It's a whole lot ridiculous, and I share just some goings-on here at Bay Harbor that um, might be of some interest to some people, but it's just a fun way for me to connect with you. That's Wednesdays at 6. Zoom meetups every day at 7. What's up Wednesday is Wednesdays at 6, and then on Thursdays, uh, the funnest thing we do is Bay Harbor care events, which are just parades of Bay Harbor people decorating their cars and driving around neighborhoods saying hi to our Bay Harbor family, but also um, bringing a whole lot of cheer and smiles to our neighbors, to kids, to people of all ages. It's just fun. And we do those every Thursday at a different neighborhood. Again, go to the app, go to the website. You can also, on our Facebook page, on our Instagram page, we're out there and you can find out the great things that are going on. One more thing I want to say before we get to worship, and this is so important, and that is I hope that you know that hunger is a very real part of this COVID-19 pandemic. I know the economy's wrecked, and I know many people are losing their jobs. I know it's been a hardship on everybody. But I also know that there are people, people who are a part of our, what I call our greater Bay Harbor family. It's specifically, I'm talking about people that are part of our My Body and Soul ministry. Low-income families right here in our area, in the, in the Bay Area, that we serve and have been serving for years. They're all low income and they all struggle in different ways. And they have for a long time. And this pandemic has just made it worse. They're hungry and they need food and we can help. And so what I wanna ask you to do is go to our app, go to our website and find out specifically how you can help. There's list of groceries, specific kinds of groceries that will be most beneficial to these families. Groceries or up to a $20 um, gift card to HEB or Kroger. We hope, you, we hope not only that you'll do that a little bit, I hope that you'll do this a whole lot. I hope that Bay Harbor will in a very big way step up and help. There's 300 families that we serve in this terrific ministry. And on some level, all 300 of them. They need our help. They have children who are hungry parents and elderly that are hungry. 
These are, these are our responsibility in a way. I feel that. I'm going to do something. I hope you will too. Let's do something big. Go on the, web, on the app or the website to find out just what to do. Get some groceries and then bring them by the My Body and Soul um, um, location right in, um, in the parking lot behind the church. They're there on Tuesdays and Thursdays. Find out more information on the app and the website. Um, this is a great way that we can help people. Um, we've been given much. This is something we can do for somebody else. So let's go big with this. Let's go big and really um, all together. And get some other, get some neighbors and friends to help us do this too. Everybody, so many, not everybody, so many people have the capacity to help. They just don't know how to do it or what to do or what is reliable. Well, this is, this, these groceries are going to go from our hands into the hands of people who are hungry. So let's do this. I'm so glad you joined us for worship um, today. God has something good for you today. So turn off all the noise, all the distractions around you. Put your phone down. And just for the next little bit, let's turn our attention to the Lord, worshiping Him and hearing what He has to say for us today. Thank you for joining us. Now, let's worship together. My name is Denzel. Thank you for having this opportunity to uh, be together in this uh, form of media. Uh, it's good to uh, know that God is still in control. And uh, these days are days of kind of reflecting about our, our life and our relationship with him. And one of the things I'd like for us to do this morning is to, would you share with me the Apostles' Creed? 
I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he arose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Will you pray with me? Heavenly Father, truly we are so privileged to be able to call you Lord. Thank you for Jesus. Thank you for the cross. Thank you for the shed blood that we might have life and have it to the full. And Lord, as we pray this morning, there are many of us who may not be feeling all that well regarding how things are going with the COVID-19 experience and challenge. Some of us, Lord, may have lost uh, financial resources, a job, even maybe our health. But we would pray, Lord, that uh, you will be with each situation, that you will guard over them and be with them and help them. Help us as a people to keep our eyes focused on you, Lord, for you are the answer to our situations. And you said you'd never leave us nor forsake us. Will you repeat with me the Lord's Prayer? Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.
Wow, I'm so grateful for our excellent musicians. Every week they do such a great job of leading us in worship. I want to talk today about unleashing our families. We've been in this series called Unleashed, and we've talked about unleashing our personal lives, our spiritual lives, our marriages. Today I want to talk about unleashing our families. Not releasing our families. Some of you may think, oh, that sounds great to me, but I'm unleashing our families. And what I mean by that, unleashing our children to become all that God designed and wanted, wants them to be. Unleashing our children to become the best versions of what God designs for our children. Unleashing our children into the world around us to demonstrate, express, manifest the great love of God, the light of Christ to the world around us. Of course, today is Mother's Day, and it's a great day to talk about raising kids, but I'm not, I'm talking to moms, but I'm also talking to dads, and I'm talking to grandparents. I'm talking to any parent who has children at no matter the age or stage they're in. I'm talking to people who don't have kids or don't have kids yet, and I'm talking to Christians, because whether you have kids or not, you, as a follower of Jesus Christ, have a part to play, a responsibility in helping impact the next generation. I'm specifically talking to people who are part of the Bay Harbor family. One of our traditions at Bay Harbor is that we baptize children. And when we baptize children, one of the things that we express in that baptism is we know that God is at work in the life, by His Spirit, in the life of every child pulling that child into a relationship with him but God never works in isolation he works with people and when we baptize children we we know that and affirm that parents have a part to play in raising children to know the Lord but we also very expressly affirm that the entire church every person every Christian has a part to pl play in raising every child to know and follow Jesus Christ. As a matter of fact, we take that so seriously that every time we baptize a child, the entire church stands up and pledges, affirms their commitment to raising this child to know and follow Jesus Christ. So when we talk about raising kids, I'm talking to everybody. And when we think about raising kids, one of the things that we all know is that raising kids is hard. It's painful. It's frustrating. It's overwhelming. It's maddening. It's also one of the great joys and privileges of our lives. There is no greater, more wonderful thing than the great joy of raising children. We talk about raising children, though, you have to think about just for one second that we have to draw a distinction, an important distinction between having children and raising children. It makes a big difference, right? I mean, having children is easy. Having children is the easiest thing in the world. All you need are a boy and a girl who've reached puberty and you can have kids, which that's a scary thought. But raising children is something altogether different. It's hard. And there's so many things that are hard about raising kids. Just one example, um, how, do you, how do you discipline a child? How do you know the right way, the right time, the right method to use to discipline a child. Every parent struggles with this, except for me. I never really struggled with this. I got this right from the very beginning. I came up with a really ingenious way to discipline my children. We came up with this whole thing. We called it pin the tail on the punishment. And what we did is I got a piece of poster board and put a grid on it. And in each square of the grid, I would put a different form of punishment, like grounding or spanking or going to your room or removing your phone or having to do chores or having to do 20 pull-ups or call the police or I mean all different kinds of things right in the middle was you get away it was a get out of jail free card is no punishment but all the other squares were some form of punishment and so when Stephen or Hayden would disobey me or do something wrong I'd get the we'd play pin the tail on the punishment and I'd put the poster board up on the wall I'd blindfold them and spin them around and then I'd put a uh, a um, post-it note in their hand and I'd say okay go pin something on the punishment grid and they would pin something and whatever wherever that post-it note landed that was their punishment that's the, the best most ingenious way to discipline your kids right well maybe not we didn't really do that 
I struggle like every other parent does with the right way to discipline your children. Or, am I doing it right? Am I saying it right? I mean, it's, it's so hard to raise kids. It's so complicated. It seems like it's even more complicated today. So I want to make it real easy. I want to talk about how we can invest in our kids in a way that will unleash them to be all that God wants them to be. There's a verse in Ephesians, in Ephesians chapter 6, verse 4. It says, it says to raise your children in the discipline and instruction of the Lord. Ephesians 6, 4, raise your children in the discipline and instruction of the Lord. Pretty straightforward, right? But you think about it and think, well, wait a second, the discipline and instruction of the Lord. Well, there's a whole lot there, right? I mean, Jesus spoke a lot. There's a lot of instructions and and things that Jesus taught about how to live the Christian life. It, that's overwhelming all by itself. But then Paul helpfully kind of condenses a lot of what it means to be a follower of Jesus down to one chapter in Ephesians chapter 4. If you were just to read Ephesians chapter 4, you would see a condensed version kind of of the teaching, instruction, and discipline of Jesus, how to live as a Christian. Read Ephesians chapter 4 and apply those practical principles to your life. There's a lot there. But I'm just going to take, I'm going to condense it down to three things. Three really essential values that we have to instill in our children three values. So I hope you stick with me through this. I'm going to talk about these as quickly as I can. The first value is the value of helping every child know their worth. Helping every child know that they have value. Helping every child know that they are loved and cherished and important. That they are treasured. That they are necessary. This is the building block of every person. It's the building block of every child. And if, if we can instill this value of worth, that they're loved and cherished and necessary early in their lives, it will, it will impact everything they do and become for the rest of their life. Now, when we think about establishing in our children their worth, one thing that is important to know is that we don't do this in, in just a, you know, a few pats on the back every once in a while and tell them every once in a while, hey, we love you. I mean, that's good to do, but that's not enough. We can't do it in a few actions or a few words. We do this in a million actions and in a million words over a long time. In all of our responses and all of our, all of the, things that we say, sometimes in the things that we don't say, in the decisions that we make, we can instill in our children the value that they are of immeasurable worth. We do this, though, not when things are good so much or when everything's going great, but we do this best when things go wrong, when things go sideways, when our children disappoint us and when they disobey us. We may get frustrated or angry or mad. We may punish our children. But it is essential that we let our children know even then, especially then, that we love them. And there's nothing that they can do that will cause us to love them less. We do this when it's hard and when it's difficult. But there's another important part of establishing a sense of value and of worth in our children. And that is we make sure that our children know that their worth is not rooted in their attractiveness, in their intelligence, or in their talent. This, in this particular area, is where we as followers of Jesus stand in dramatic contrast to the world and to the culture around us. Because Every single message in the culture outside the doors of our house and on the screens that our children watch, the message is overwhelming that their worth is tied to their attractiveness, their intelligence, and their talent. 
That is a fragile version of worth. You know it is because, because we know that, that if our worth, if our sense of our worth is built on our attractiveness, our talent, or our intelligence, we will find really quickly that there will always be somebody more attractive than us, someone more intelligent than us, and someone more talented than us. And when we discover that if our worth is built on those things, then that will begin to erode our sense of worth. No, we don't tie it to those things like the culture around us does. Our, our job is to instill in our children that their worth is not in what they do, but it is in who they are. More importantly, their worth is in who God made them to be. Look, our children are going to leave the house one day. There's going to come a day when we're going to stand in our driveway and our kids are going to back out and they're going to go to college or they're going to go to a job somewhere or they're going to move away to a different part of town or a different state. And we're going to, with tears in our eyes, we're going to be waving goodbye. Now you might do some high fives and, you know, knee slaps later, but but our kids are going to leave the house. And when they leave the house, they're going to go into a world that isn't going to love our little precious angels the way we have. They're going to go into a world where people are going to call them stupid. They're going to call them dumb. They're going to tell their our, our little angels that they have no value. They're going to tell our children that, that they're not necessary. And our children are going to hear that. And they're going to feel that. Our children are going to fail. Our children are going to make mistakes. And when those things happen, and they're going to happen, but when they happen, either our children will spiral down into a, into a spiral of depression and self-loathing, or they're going to learn from it. They're going to be better and they're going to shake it off, and they're going to move on. And which way our children go when that happens is determined by what happens at home. So our job, our job, whatever relationship we have with the children around us, is to do everything that we can do over and over and over again when it's easy and when it's not easy to build a sense of worth and value in our kids so that they know that they are loved and cherished necessary another another important value to instill in our kids is the value of responsibility this takes that that idea of their worth and takes it one step further that their worth is inherent in who God made them to be but part of who God made them to be is is to give them abilities to give them talents and gifts to give them resources to to give them a family to to place them in a in a place where they have resources that have been given to them born into a certain zip code that most people on this planet couldn't even dream to be born into our children have been given much and with that comes great responsibility this second value, this value of responsibility, is a value that reminds us that, that the world doesn't revolve around us and doesn't exist for us. When I think about this, I think of, I think of the Holy Land. If you remember in, in your Bibles, if you're ever looking around or flipping through your Bibles, in the back of your Bible, there's, after the book of Revelation, there's always the maps. Most people don't pay attention to maps, but if you have a Bible, flip back to the maps or think about the maps in the Bible. We'll put one up here on the screen. But when you think about the Holy Land, the land of Israel where Jesus lived, there are three really important bodies of water. There's the Sea of Galilee up in the north part of Israel that flows into the Jordan River. And then at, in the southern part of Israel, the Jordan River flows into the Dead Sea. Sea of Galilee, Jordan River, Dead Sea. Three really important bodies of water. Up, up in the north is that Sea of Galilee. I've, I've been there. It's a beautiful, wonderful place. 
It's surrounded by lush mountains and beautiful plains. It's a, this enormous body of water with all kinds of life in it, over, over a hundred different varieties of fish in the Sea of Galilee. People have fished and, and, and provided for food for their families for thousands of years on the Sea of Galilee. It's a magnificent, beautiful place. And out of the Sea of Galilee, the Jordan River flows and into, and the Jordan River flows into the Dead Sea. The Dead Sea. You know why it's called the Dead Sea? Because it's dead. Because nothing lives in the Dead Sea. You see, the thing about the Dead Sea is the Jordan River flows into it, but there's no rivers or streams that flow out of it. So all the water that comes into it, it just stays there. And because it's so hot there, it's just surrounded by desert. It's so hot there that the water evaporates, but all that remains is this murky, thick, highly mineral, salt-concentrated, kind of syrupy-type water. As a matter of fact, it's so thick, if you go there, you can actually lay down on the, raw, on, the, on the Dead Sea and float without sinking because the water is so thick. It's really like syrup because so much of the, the water molecules have evaporated and all this left of these, all these deposits of minerals. It's the saltiest water in the whole world. And because of that, nothing lives there. It's the Dead Sea. And the reason it's the Dead Sea is that though water comes into it, this great water from the Jordan River coming down from the Sea of Galilee, there's nothing that goes out of it. It just stays there. So there's two bodies of water. There's the Sea of Galilee, lush, beautiful, all these wonderful varieties of fish. And there's the Dead Sea. The Dead Sea. And when I think about that, I think that, that everybody, everybody is either a Sea of Galilee person or they're a Dead Sea person. A Sea of Galilee person. The Sea of Galilee has all these different streams and rivers flowing into it and then water flowing out of it through the Jordan River. So it has all these great resources flowing into it, but then also they flow out of it as well. And that's the reason. That's it. It's alive. But the Dead Sea has water flowing into it, but nothing flow out of it. Everybody's either a Sea of Galilee Christian or a Dead Sea Christian. We all have resources, talents, and abilities that flow into us. But there are some people who it flows out of them just as easily, just as graciously. And that's part of what makes us alive to be useful. But some of us have the same version of resources flowing into us. But we keep it all to ourselves. No benefit to anybody else around us or the world around us. And everybody's a Sea of Galilee person or a Dead Sea person. When I think about that, I also remember that most of Jesus' greatest miracles happened in and around the Sea of Galilee. Are you a Sea of Galilee person or a Dead Sea person? You're one or the other, predominantly. But the real question is, we're talking, we're talking about raising kids. The question is, how do you raise Sea of Galilee kids? I will tell you, there's only one way. And that is, you have to be a Sea of Galilee parent. You have to be a Sea of Galilee person. The only way that we'll raise Sea of Galilee children is we have to be Sea of Galilee people. We have been given resources, abundant resources. And if we keep them and use them all to ourselves and for ourselves, we're Dead Sea people. But if we use them for others to benefit God and the kingdom of God, His local church, then we become Sea of Galilee people. Miracles happen in us and we become useful to others. This is the value of responsibility that we instill in our kids. I'm making sure it's been instilled in us. A third, a third value is worth, responsibility. And the third value is respect. Respect. Respect is like responsibility in that, in that it's an outward focused value. Respect reminds us, again, that the world doesn't revolve around us. 
but there's people around us. And part of our maturity, part of our ability to be useful to God, to be all that God has made us to be, is to remember that we are made for others. That we are made to lift up and build up others. And just as we understand that we have value, part of our responsibility is to make sure that people around us know that they too have value. And here's the thing that makes this one distinctly Christian. And that is that most of the world around us would affirm that it's a good idea to respect others. But for most of the world, respecting others means respecting the people who are like you or who like you. But we're as followers of Jesus, we're called to a different standard. And the standard that Jesus gave us is to love our enemies, to love those who persecute you, to love those who make life hard on you, to love those that are easy to miss and easy to ignore, to love those who are different than you, to love those who are difficult to love, to love those who are marginalized by society. When we love the hard to love, the difficult to love, the impossible to love, when we respect them, when we value them, when we lift them up, then we then we, more than any other time, embody the very heart of the instruction of Jesus, who said that by this all people will know that you are mine, if you love one another. How do we teach our children to embody this value of respecting others, lifting others up, loving others? Well, you guessed it, there's only one way. It's called behavioral learning. It's the best kind of learning where they see embodied in us what we want them, what we want them to do, what we want them to know. Behavioral learning means in this respect that we practice this priority of respecting others, especially as followers of Jesus, especially those who are difficult, different, and hard to love. We do this, not in theory, but in practice. We do this, we do this when people, when people tick us off, when people cut us off, when people cuss us off, or people, when people hurt us, when people demean us or diminish us, instead of getting them back, paying them back, instead of stabbing them in the back, instead of gossiping about them and talking about them. No, not, not us. We must love them back. We must lift them up. We must see the good in every person, even when they're not good to us. This is the standard that Christ calls us to. This is what it is to love one another. It's what it is to respect others. To remember that the world doesn't revolve around us. We exist for others. Because when we do that, we demonstrate what it is to be a child of God. When our children understand their worth, when our children understand the great value of responsibility, being Sea of Galilee people, not Dead Sea people. When our children understand the great value of respecting others, especially those who are hard and difficult to love, then we are setting our children up for not just success as the world sees it, but setting them up to be unleashed in the world, to be the light of Christ and to reveal the life of Christ to a world that so desperately needs to see it. When I say all this, I, I, know, I know for sure. I know that there's a lot of things as parents that we can't control. We don't, we don't get to control our children's genetics. We don't get to control the other influences in our children's lives. We don't get to control the decisions that they make as they grow. So we can't control everything. Of course not. But there are some things that are within the realm of of what we can do to set the foundation, the stage for our children to become all that God wants them to be. 
And yes, we'll make mistakes and fail. I've made more than that I know, and the ones I know, there's more than I can count. But remember, we're not in this alone. As we live our own lives as followers of Jesus, repent of our sin and the times that we have failed Him, and commit ourselves to following Him, living lives as followers of Jesus Christ, we will lead our children and the children that we have the privilege to influence around us, to know Christ and to become all Christ designed them to be. It's Mother's Day, but really the fact is every day is Mother's Day, Father's Day. Every day is a day we have to influence the generation coming up behind us. Let's not miss these opportunities that God gives us every day to help our children know their value, to help raise red to, 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 help, to help raise Sea of Galilee children, to raise children who love the world around them like Christ does, so that the world around them might know Christ. We don't get this perfect, but when we call on God, we have the help of God, access to the power of God in our lives. So let me invite you to join with me now as we pray for our children. Heavenly Father, we thank you for our children, for, the, for those who are parents and have children, whatever stage and age they are. We thank you for the gift of those children. We pray, God, that you will help us to be responsible with these great gifts, to love them and cherish them the way you do, to raise them, to understand that they have been given much and have, the, and have much responsibility with that to be Sea of Galilee people. And Lord, help us to embody what it is to love others around us, even the hard and difficult to love, to love them in a way that they know they're loved, to sacrifice and to serve, to go out of our way for them so they'll know their value and their worth. Help us to do that, Lord, so that we could be a good model for our children and, Lord, that this church would be a church of people who know and understand and accept our responsibility to impact the generation coming behind us so that the world they are growing up in might be a world that is filled with the love of Christ so that the world would know you. Lord, help us to do this together and by your power. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I'm so grateful for you joining us today. I hope you have a blessed week. I wish I could say I'll see you next week in person. But it won't be next week. It'll be as soon as we can make it happen. But until then, connect with us. There's all kinds of ways through our app and through our website. Don't forget our Zoom meetup starting tomorrow. Um, What's Up Wednesday on Facebook Live with me on Wednesday. I hope you'll watch that. It's, it's ridiculous, but it's fun. Our caravan on Thursday. So many good things happening. So, so join us this week and for sure join us next Sunday. And remember, if something that you heard today, whether it's some of the music or something in the message, if you know a family, um, maybe this might be just a thing that would be an encouragement to them as um, they, they walk through the daily challenge of raising children. There's help for them. And that's what we want the world around us to know. So thank you for being with, being with us today. God bless you. We'll see you soon.